Speak to me about suffering. I, mean, I think suffering is uh, inseparable from love or love from suffering. Uh, because love is the self-surrender of someone to another. And, and this self-surrender requires that we really die to ourselves in order to live in and through the other. The mystery of iniquity is the resistance to this. The show Rick and Morty follows the interdimensional adventures of Rick Sanchez and his grandson Morty. Rick is the most intelligent man in the universe and can essentially do anything he wants. He can clone himself, travel anywhere in space and time, and he even created an entire planet of girlfriends for himself. Morty, on the other hand, is awkward, fretful, and easily influenced by Rick. The show bounces back and forth from the Smith's home to the farthest reaches of the galaxy with a constant reminder that the universe is giant, cold, and brutal. That the more you dive into reality, what you will find is nothingness. The fact that we're all going to die one day, the fact that the universe is so big nothing and it matters, those facts are who you are. That love is a lie. Listen, Morty, I hate to break it to you, but what people call love is just a chemical reaction that compels animals to breed. It hits hard, Morty, then it slowly fades. That there is no God. Yes, I did it! There is no God in your face! And the easiest way to get through it all is distraction. Nobody exists on purpose. Nobody belongs anywhere. Everybody's gonna die. Come watch TV. And this truth is incredibly isolating for Rick. It isolates him from his family and from all of humanity. And he only gets through it by drinking and his alcoholism. The other characters in the show are fortunately unintelligent enough to deceive themselves of these facts and therefore are able to get through life by distracting themselves with family, love, and friendship. But Rick, who is the most intelligent man in the universe, is unable to avoid the logical conclusion that life and everything it offers is meaningless, which is why he eventually goes into the garage and tries to kill himself, and only fails because he's so drunk he can't pull it off. As sad as this moment is, we can't say Rick is unjustified in his actions. In a universe that is giant, cold, and brutal, what is there to hold on to besides distraction and self-deception? What recourse is there for a scientist who has stared into the darkest places of the cosmos and seen only death and despair? Dr. Takashi Nagai was born in 1908 into a Japan that was rapidly establishing itself as a growing world power. The emperor wanted a modern Japan that was fueled by the ideas of the Enlightenment and Western thinking. Takashi, who was the son of a doctor and a brilliant student, chose to go to Nagasaki to study medicine and the emerging science of radiology. While he was there, he became enamored with his work and the atheistic culture of a modernized Japan, which pushed him to the forefront of his field. However, at the beginning of his third year at university, Takashi received an unexpected summons home. His mother had had a brain hemorrhage, which left her unable to speak and on the verge of death. Takashi, after running home to see her, went to her bedside where she looked into his eyes and then breathed her last. Her chance to see him was the last thing keeping her alive. Takashi, who was a very rational and scientific man, was deeply bothered by the mystery of that look in his mother's eyes as she breathed her last breath. Where he expected to see finality and decay, he instead saw life. When he returned to school, he moved into the house of a Catholic family as a boarder. Although the family was very devout, Takashi lived a life apart from them and was even a frequent visitor of the local brothel. 
It was not until the family's daughter became ill and Takashi was forced to perform an emergency appendectomy that Takashi began to take interest in their faith. As he nursed her back to health, Takashi was astounded at her purity and gentleness, and it was these things that attracted her to him. Her presence in his life began to transform his heart, and eventually the family invited Takashi to mass with them, and he once again was left unsettled by an experience of the transcendent. After that, he asked the priest to instruct him in the faith, and shortly after his baptism, he asked the daughter of the family he was staying with to marry him. Takashi began a new life with his wife and their children, and he committed himself to the service of his family and friends. Then, on August 6, 1945, news came out that a bomb had dropped in Hiroshima that had decimated the entire city. Takashi and his wife sent their children to stay with their grandma in the country. But at 11 o'clock, three days later, the bomb dropped on Nagasaki, and 70,000 people were killed almost instantly. Takashi was in the most protected part of the hospital at that time in the radiology department when the bomb went off. It wasn't until two days after the bomb that Dr. Nagai was free to go looking for his wife. He found her charred bones and in her hands was the remains of a rosary that she had used to pray for him daily. A few months later, the Bishop of Nagasaki announced plans for an open air mass in the remains of the cathedral and he asked Takashi to speak. The good doctor, who had lost everything he loved in the world to the very science that he studied, stood before a people who had lost everything and told them that, on the morning of August 9th, the world stood at a crossroads. A decision had to be made. Peace or further cruel bloodshed and carnage. We were the chosen victim the lamb without blemish, slain as a whole burnt offering on an altar of sacrifice, atoning for the sins of all the nations during World War II. He offered them a proposal, an alternative to hate and deep-seated anger. He offered them the quiet of peace and resignation. Dr. Nagai had found out what Rick had been missing all along, that thinking only in a scientific way is incredibly isolating because it can't take into account all of reality. Empirical data is just as giant, cold, and brutal as the depths of space. And if that's all there is, then Rick is right and nothing matters. But if there's something more, something mysterious and ungraspable, then everything matters. If nothing matters, why would you do that for me? I don't know, maybe you matter so little that I like you, or maybe it makes you matter. Maybe I love you. And rather than turning to distraction or self-deception, we can offer a new proposal. The same proposal that Dr. Nagai offered Japan after the bombs hit when the country was in a state of total despair. That suffering is not a problem to be solved, but a mystery to be lived. A mystery that reflects the transcendence of the human person, since it points to the author of the drama of human life. And the response to suffering is not to stop caring. That, in fact, is hell. But to experience a caring that sustains us in our humanity as it was meant to be. This is the redemption that the heart seeks. And, uh, and I think the, the, the suffering occurs, uh, the redemption of suffering occurs when that suffering is through the power of, of God in Christ, turned from uh, isolation to an opportunity to experience love. Uh, Jesus does not eliminate suffering, transforms it, redeems it, ties it to the experience of love. Uh, we cannot, in this kind of world, love without suffering. And uh, that is why we may not have answers when someone says, why? I don't know, but I will be with you. I will risk sharing this question with you, this solidarity in suffering. 
it changes its meaning and, and in the end uh, love triumphs if there is someone someone there saying I will be with you <laughs>